one thing that absolutely transformed my life and my entrepreneurship 1000% is I started to sync my business with my cycle. Game changing, game changing thing. Because when we start looking at the cycle and every woman is different and we have all these different variations to it, in saying that the more I do this, it's been years now that I not only track my cycle, but I support hundreds of women to do it. And I see that there's usually a quite firm similarity between the phases of the cycle that we're in and how we feel. So naturally, there is a couple of phases of our cycles where we are a lot more in our masculine energy. Then there are a couple of phases where we are a lot more in our feminine. For example, I know when I will never launch something because I know that in that phase of my cycle, that's just not what I'm up to. This is Leah Steele, AKA The Wealth Witch, and this is my podcast. I'm here to activate you to remembrance of your divine birthright to be wealthy in all areas of your life. This podcast is for people ready to have controversial conversations about the financial control, manipulation, and tyranny that faces humanity today. I'm gonna live in freedom. The Wealth Witch. It's for the people who are ready to wake up, deconstruct their wealth programming, and free themselves from the financial slavery consciousness that serves the global financial agenda. I'm committed to realizing a new global wealth paradigm where economic freedom is the reality and where you get to design and live the life of your dreams. Now let's do the damn thing. Hey, hey, and welcome to another episode of the Wealth Witch Podcast. I am your host, Leah Steele, the Wealth Witch, and I am so excited today to be joined by the beautiful Sigrid Tassias. Um, She is a embodiment and leadership master coach. She's a speaker. Um, She's an author of the book, Intimacy Within. um, And she is the host of the top rated podcast, Sacred Leaders. She's a humanitarian. She's a medicine woman. Um, I was really, really honored to be on her podcast last week. And so I'm really excited to have her here um, and be able to share her and her work with my audience now. So Sigrid, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Amazing. Well, let's just dive in. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I want to cover. We've got a we've got a lot of information that we want to get through on this podcast. And I actually want to start with your podcast because it's amazing. And your podcast is called Sacred Leaders. And I want to know how you came up with this name of this podcast and what it means to you and Um, what inspires you to bring the type of people that you bring onto the podcast? Mm, Yeah, great question. It's funny, I haven't thought about this since I started the podcast, (laughs) but I guess it always made sense and and the name came really easily to me because for many years I've been working as a bridge between ancient wisdom and modern leadership. And this has been my life's work. I... I went really deep into all of these different practices and um, modalities of healing and working with all of these different um, ancient wisdom cultures, I like to say. And also, I went really deep into the personal development world and uh, grew as an entrepreneur and had so many different successful business owners, entrepreneurs, leaders, visionaries all around me all of the time. So I found myself naturally just reaching these worlds and supporting those visionaries and entrepreneurs to bring more depth to their legacy and also supporting those spiritual entrepreneurs to bring more success to the things that they were doing to really empower themselves to dream bigger and know how to powerfully lead in this world. So. The work has always been about this bridge between all of the ways in which indigenous communities and indigenous cultures have known how to live in harmony with the earth and with one another, and all of the ways in which we have developed systems and um, and programs that really support humanity to continuously evolve. So the name Sacred Leaders came because I I envision this world where we all come back to a space where we are living in harmony with the earth and with one another. 
And I don't necessarily envision it in the hippie commune where we're all naked and we're all living with our money and things like that. So when I think about sacred leaders, I think about this merging of the ancient ways and the new ways, this ancient future. And I think about the importance of us leaders, those that have put our hand up to say, I want to help humanity in whatever way I want to be of service, to really take the, the label of leader with so much reverence and so much humility and so much commitment and see it as an honor, see it as something that is sacred versus something that is just for our ego's validation and for us to get, you know, praise and money and all the things that we can get from it, but that shouldn't be the point to start with. So the reason why I love to bring so many different people into the podcast, sometimes I bring medicine men and medicine women, and then I bring, you know, best-selling authors and multi seven, eight, nine figure entrepreneurs is because I want to give people an opportunity to see that this merging is not only possible, but it's necessary if we want to move forward towards the vision of the world that I feel so many of us have. I love that. I love that. And um, you end your podcast with a question about what is uh, being a sacred leader mean to you. And that really struck me when I was on your show, like to bring people into that really intentional space of like, why are we here? You know, what is it that we're doing? And you know, as you know, my, you know, I, I lead from a very, very service-based place. And that is my primary objective each morning when I wake up is like, how can I be of service today? And so I just, that really struck me when you asked that question at the end of your podcast recording. And so I was really inspired to ask you more about that and, you know, how that, how that came to be. So that kind of transitions me into the next uh, bit that I wanted to talk about, because I know that you actually lead ceremonial containers and retreats. And, um, so a big part of what you do is create initiation containers. So I would love for you to talk a little bit about what that is and what that means for you. Yeah. So there's many different ways in which I work with this in these containers, but the, the bottom line is we enter these containers knowing that this is, is as a rite of passage would be. So I can't say I'd lead traditional rites of passage because I haven't been given the blessings and the initiations for that and I am not into cultural appropriation. In saying that, I was inspired by these cultures that for thousands of years have had rites of passage initiations and rituals where little girls were taught how to become women. They were mentored into that space. Little boys were mentored into becoming men. Later on, when people were about to get married, they were mentored into being in a marriage situation. When they were about to become parents, they were mentored into. There's so many different rites of passage that um, life naturally offers to us. But in our fast paced society, we tend to miss the point. So we go from being a girl to being a woman because we become, we become old enough to be considered a woman. And then we enter into motherhood, some people more intentionally than other, but really without a lot of mentorship. And surely you can read books and you can watch documentaries and things, but there is not this communal support or this, this rites of passage for it. And I was so inspired by seeing the level of embodiment and power that I experienced in people that had had those rites of passage, that I understood that coaching alone wasn't enough for me. I have gone through so many different initiations with him throughout my life. And this is why I bring this to my clients. So we don't just go into coaching and looking at your goals and looking at the things that you want to accomplish, but we treat this as a sacred initiation where you come to find a next level version of yourself. You come to let go and shed some layers. You come to grow into some things. So you take it with that level of reverence, with that level of intentionality and that level of commitment, instead of it being a thing where we see each other every couple of weeks for coaching and we just talk and do some processes and that's about it. So I start every single container, even my online coaching containers with an opening ceremony. What happens in the ceremonies depends on each person and what I feel that it's needed. And then we also finish each container with a closing ceremony. And every single session, it's done in a specific, particular way. So we're constantly bringing the concept of ceremony and ritual to this space so that, again, we're not just working with the mental, analytical, conceptual levels that we have access to, 
but really from an embodied energetic um, shamanic at times levels we are really bringing that um, transformation that we're wanting to call in and then when we do retreats as a whole other story but um, borderline is the same we go in with so much reverence so much intentionality and so much commitment to doing deep work um, and everything is treated as a ceremony because that's just how I roll and how I like to do things amazing um, so that's a great transition into embodiment as you were just talking about that um, I'm really excited to have this conversation with you about embodiment, what that means today in today's society. You know, I, as a person that, you know, bridges, um, a lot of spiritual community and entrepreneurship and, um, is a person that operates with a lot of masculine energy and, and tends to not, you know, in my business life, have a lot of feminine embodied uh, practices that are part of my business. Now I do have those that are part of my life, but um, I, I want to have this discussion because, you know, there have been many, many times throughout my career and, you know, in all of the different arenas and areas that it spanned uh, over the years, but certainly once I started working um, more in the spiritual world that I have really been criticized by embodiment teachers or coaches, um, as not being embodied. And so I want to talk a little bit about this because, you know, I know that from conversations with lots of other female entrepreneurs, that this is actually not an uncommon thing. And so I'd love to have your take on this and to, um, just have a conversation about, you know, what this is, what it, what it means and, and what your position is on embodiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. So, one of the definitions of embodiment is bringing something from a space of idea or concept to a tangible, visible form. And I love this because it reminds me of this say that how you show up shows up. And this is what we're doing. We're bringing concepts, we're bringing conceptual ideas, we're bringing quote unquote knowledge, that type of knowledge that makes sense so you store it in your brain in that box of things that I decided made sense, but I will never make a use of. We're bringing those into tangible, visible form. And how we do this is through really integrating those things from a space of mind, from a space of, again, make sense in the brain. I understand it in my head into the body. And there's so many different ways in which we do this. One of my ultimate favorites is working with somatics to really expand our capacity to be, do, or have what we would like, what we desire, what we say that we're about. Really bringing that level of embodiment to the body through regulating the nervous system so that we feel safe to be, do, or have what it is that we desire. Another thing that I feel it's extremely important is to align. Can I just talk for a moment on that? For, for people that might not be familiar with somatics. Can you yes. give a brief description of what that is? Yeah, thank you. So the body remembers what the mind doesn't. Every single piece of trauma, every single piece, and I'm not just talking capital T trauma, every little thing that was too fast, too much, too soon, gets stored in our systems as trauma. And that gets stored in our bodies until we move out of it. So we can do talk therapy, we can acquire conscious language, we can do positive affirmations, we can tell ourselves stories, but until we have cleared those things from our bodies, those things remain. This is why a lot of people do mindset work or positive affirmations, but nothing truly changes in their lives because they're telling themselves a story from the mind to the mind, but their bodies are running the show and they know another story. So what we do with somatics is helping the body to release stagnant and stuck energy and trauma so that we can create more space to then catch up. It's almost like catching up the body to what the mind believes. I'm going to keep it simple for those people that are new to this concept, but basically just imagine that your mind is running so much faster than your body. Your mind is understanding concepts, listening to podcasts, reading books, having conversations, but your body, until you work somatically with it, it's not catching up to it. So you can pay for all of the coaching sessions and all of the hypnosis sessions and all of the different things, but until your body is caught up to that conscious awareness that you are updating every day, 
it's not going to feel safe to allow you to be, have, or do what you want. So somatic embodiment practices are practices that help the nervous system to regulate. And in other words, to find safety in places or situations where we previously experienced threat, which is why it is so powerful. Amazing. Yeah. So for my audience that's familiar with my work and the emotional clearing work that I do, like this is very similar in, in many ways. We're using kinesiology and the acupressure points to release stuff, stuff, stagnant emotional pathology and trauma from the organs and meridian systems of the body. Um, so, you know, it's, it's another way of doing a similar thing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's so important to not stay just at the mindset work for sure. Yeah. And as I was saying, the other thing that I feel is so important is to have a good old reality check and really bring our actions and our thoughts and our words into alignment. Now we can't always control our thoughts. So I always say, start with your actions and then walk your way for backwards. Right. But it is important that we do that. If we say we have particular values so that we care about particular things, we make sure that our money is supporting those things that we say we care about. We make sure that our time is invested and our energy is put into supporting those things that we say that we care about instead of going against our word constantly. So starting with those two things, we create the space for a much deeper embodiment of all of the things that we're trying to, to really bring about in our lives. But maybe up until now, we've only done conceptually. Yeah. Amazing. So what are your thoughts on, um, you know, some of these, I mean, I guess let's just talk a little bit about traditional, you know, masculine energy versus feminine energy and embodiment and, you know, the, and the buzzword really, that is like the spiritual buzzword of embodiment versus your beliefs around embodiment. Yeah. Well, it's definitely a word that's thrown around nowadays and it's just become this thing that we all talk about. And what I see, I mean, we could go so many places with this question. <laughs> what I see, especially in the spiritual community, the new age spirituality, it is used in a really misunderstood way. My experience of it, it is. Um, especially hearing you say about people criticizing you or coming with those comments. The first thought that comes to mind is, well, one of the main aspects of the healthy feminine is embodied compassion. So to be looking at another person and focusing on what someone else is doing and pointing the figure at them doesn't sound to me like feminine embodiment. So that's where I'd start, right? When we talk about feminine and masculine, we all have feminine and masculine energetics within, which is just another way to describe uh, one directional, like single focus and a more vast, open, creative, um, many, many paths, I'd like to say, um, energy. We all have those energies. We all have moments where we can really focus, really have one goal and go for it, where we can be really practical, where we can be really um, single directional. That's basically it, one directional. And then there are moments where we can be a lot more intuitive and we can be a lot more creative and we can be a lot more in our emotions. So the confusion comes because when we start calling it masculine and feminine, we think about men and women and a lot of people relate to it as such. We all have feminine and masculine within, and it's actually important that we do. It is not quite, it's not supportive to run just on one side of the spectrum because we actually get to strive to be in a balanced way, in a harmonious way, using and activating both energies within. When I think about feminine embodiment, particularly in entrepreneurship, I think about the fact that entrepreneurship and the business world was made by men for men. And this is not because men were terrible and they wanted to do something wrong for women or whatever. It's simply because it wasn't that long ago that we could not work. We could not vote. We didn't have a say in the business world. So therefore, all of the different ways in which we see business and entrepreneurship and the success stories portrayed are for men because they were created by men. And when we are entering into this world of entrepreneurship as women, if we want to do it in a way that is 
femininely embodied, that it's not costing us our softness, it's not costing us our vulnerability, it's not costing us our ability to tune into our creativity, our intuition, our sensuality. We have to look at how do we do that differently? And that means many things. I don't know if you want me to go deeper into that, but there's a few well, things then. Yeah, I would love to hear more about that. I, I also just, you know, would love to say here that like, from my perspective, one of the things that you know, I've really come to embrace is that, you know, I love that you talked about the, the masculine and the feminine and that we, we each have that in us. And, you know, for me, one of the things that I've really embraced is that we're each unique in the, the way that those energies show up, um, inside our energy field, um, and in our realities. And when we embrace that, those energies, they're going to ebb and flow. They're going to come into balance and they're going to go out of balance, depending upon what's happening in our life circumstances. And when we step away from judging that and we embrace that, you know, we're perfect as we are first and foremost, but spiritual growth and expansion is, is, there so that we can step into the next level version of ourselves, the next greatest version of ourselves. And, you know, for me, when it comes to masculine and feminine energy, like I believe that spiritual growth and expansion includes a mastering of those energies and an ability to bring those energies into right relation in whatever scenario and situation you're currently facing. And so for me, when I stopped allowing myself to be shamed about the way my masculine energy shows up in my life or in my business, and I realized that actually I quite like how my masculine energy shows up in my business. Um, it's part of the reason why I'm so successful. Does it mean I'm operate, operating like a man? No, it is my masculine energy signature that is just right for me. And there are other times when I get to allow my feminine energy signature to be the one in charge and to, you know, be the, be the predominant energy in whatever it is that I'm doing, whether it's mothering or spending time with my friends or spending time with my husband and, and in some very intuitive aspects of my business as well. And so I, I just think it's important that, you know, we start to have these conversations about one that we're not talking about man versus woman which is exactly what you said. We're talking about masculine energy and feminine energy and that we all have both and that those energies are not always going, they're not going to be static. It's not like you have more of one and less of the other. It's, it's energy and energy is always in a constant state of movement and flow. And so when we embrace what's, you know, what I said, which is like, what's, what's the right relation of masculine feminine for the scenario that you're in right now? Um, that's when I think we really start to be able to actually step into our power and we step out of judgment or we step out of worrying about judgment. And, and that same goes for women and men, right? Like when men have the ability to decide that to allow their feminine energy to be predominant in certain scenarios and situations in their life, um, if, if it's in right relation for whatever that scenario or situation is, like we become more empowered when we embrace all of us. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you brought this up because this is actually one of the ways I have seen women can really learn to harness and appreciate and honor, like you were saying, their inner masculine and their inner feminine equally. Because it's not like one is more important than the other. Of course, we need masculine energy as well. And another way of saying it, like let's teach masculine for a second, that is directional energy. Let's teach feminine for a second, that is receptive energy. We need both. We need absolutely both. So in saying that, one thing that I do that absolutely transformed my life and my entrepreneurship 1000% and I encourage all of my clients to do is I started to sync my business with my cycle. Game changing. 
game changing thing because when we start looking at the cycle and every woman it's different and we have all these different variations to it in saying that the more i do this it's been years now that i not only track my cycle but i support hundreds of women to do it and i see that there's usually a quite firm similarity between the phases of the cycle that we're in and how we feel and um what things we're more eager and capable of doing we're capable of doing everything anytime however our brain is generating different amounts of hormones in every phase of our cycles so naturally there is a couple of phases of our cycles where we are a lot more in our quote-unquote masculine energy by default then there are a couple of phases where we are by default, a lot more in our feminine. Knowing this is so powerful because it helps us, like you were saying, to not judge it, to not try to gaslight it or override it or, you know, try to get rid of it. But it also helps us to work with it. For example, I know when I will never launch something because I know that in that phase of my cycle, that's just not what I'm up to. I don't do podcasts in particular phases of my cycle. I don't do, there's certain things that I just don't do, but I also don't schedule romantic vacations with my partner in certain parts of my cycle because I know I'm gonna be a lot more in my masculine and it's not gonna work as well for us. So really learning to, to connect with our cyclical nature is so powerful. There are so many other ways in which we can do this, but this is the first one that I really like to share with each woman, because if you're menstruating, you have this power to really connect with the seasons within and know when you're going to be naturally in your masculine and naturally in your feminine, and then bring that into all of your containers. Whenever I have to create things that are like back end, strategizing, focusing on different details, and I have to be more active, I know I'm going to do that where I'm in more in the more masculine, quote unquote, masculine time of the month. And then when I am creating something and I want to be creative, I want to be intuitive, I want to be a lot more in my soft feminine energy. I know when that is as well. So I love to always mention that because it is such a game changer. Yeah, I think that's important. I mean, you know, I think I began that journey about five years ago. Um, and it comes a little second nature to me now because I really did track it and was so like hyper vigilant and focused on it for so long. Um, and I think that I would love to hear like the resources that you have, but I think the two game, the two books that were absolute game changers for me were love your lady landscape by Lisa Lister and then the optimized woman. And I can't think of the author of the optimized woman right now, but we'll put the, we'll put the books, the links in the show notes, certainly, but both of those and in very different ways, those books helped me a lot, but really to be able to understand those phases of our, our lunar cycle, which is really what it is as a lunar cycle and how to take advantage of the shifts in our energy, because each phase is equally powerful. They're just powerful in different ways. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm a hundred percent on board with that. And, you know, it's interesting. And, and, and even as I've started aging, you know, I'm turning 45 in a couple of days and, you know, I'm noticing that like, you know, as I'm moving into like, really like, you know, soon going to be moving into this crone, like part of my life, which I can't believe, but that's happening. Um, I, you know, one of the things I'm recognizing is, is actually those, um, cycles are shifting for me a little bit. So whereas before, like, I really wanted to be like on, you know, day one of my bleed or day two of my bleed, I really wanted to be like insular and not doing anything. It's like, now I have, like, I want to go work out and I want to be, you know, like, moving endorphins and moving energy through my body. And so there's just, you know, having that awareness of, of where you are, and then also being able to adapt to the evolution of how those cycles change as we get older. Um, it's really powerful. And, you know, often if something's not going right in my business, or I'm like trying to push something through and I'm like, why is this not working? Like, and I'm getting frustrated. I'll go back to that and be like, 
Oh, because I'm in my creative phase right now, not in my doing phase. So maybe I should just yeah. chill for a minute. <laughs> you know, yeah. and so, and, and in those times, sometimes I will shift the way things are going or the way something's being launched or the way, you know what I mean? So I can energetically support it because I do think it's so important. And, you know, if you're a woman that's listening to this and you are no longer menstruating or bleeding, you still have lunar cycles. Like you still have those cycles in your life. It's a little bit more difficult to track them to begin with, but, you know, taking notes and journaling and, and really identifying like where your energy is day to day can help you to determine which of those phases you're in. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I have a funny story of a client that has been resisting tracking this for a long time. And she's been working with me for almost over a year. And I'm like, seriously, like you're the one client that is not tracking her cycle yet. And recently she sent me a voice note and she was like, oh, I just wanted to let you know I'm I'm feeling really uninspired. I don't know what's happening, but I'm feeling like up and down. I feel a little bit good and then I don't feel so good. It's been happening for the last few days and I just replied to her back with what day of your cycle are you in and for how many days has this been happening and she got back to me like oh my god I can't believe it she's like I started bleeding like four days ago exactly when this started so it's really important like it reminded me when you were saying your story that we understand that this happens and as you said if you're not menstruating it's I see it as an opportunity an invitation to listen even more deeply because those lunar cycles are happening are taking place and as you mentioned we have different superpowers in each of those phases none is more special than the other and when we can work with the inner wisdom of our bodies instead of against it so much shifts so what are your go-to resources for this yes oh, so, so She's like, oh, this is relatively new to me. Like, where do I go? Obviously, I've shared a couple of books that were impactful for me, but I would love to hear from you. Like what, you know? Yeah, um, I have the book right here. I don't remember her name. So let me check. So In the Flow by Elisa Vitti is a really good book for that. I find that the majority of my clients uh, find those books a little bit heavy. So if you're listening to this, and you're reading one of those books and you feel like it's too much, I recommend finding any podcast with her that she's speaking about this. So she specializes in this. She actually also has an app to track your cycle and you can put when your cycle starts, when your cycle ends, and they give you tips as well. They tell you what phase you're in and what foods you usually would, your body would appreciate more you eating, what type of exercise you get to do. So there's that. And I also have a free um, download that people can get of um, menstrual workflow, I call it, where people can get um, this PDF, this workbook, where I explain what tasks I find from my experience, my experience with my clients. Most women are more eager, capable, excited to do in each phase. So you can just have a look and start comparing how you're feeling to that the information that I provide for you and see if it aligns because ultimately once you've done it a few months like you said it becomes second nature but at the start it can be a lot I know that women we can say all the books and all of the things and I loved Alisa Vitti's books in saying that I know that a lot of people just don't finish them because not just her books but a lot of books that are um about one specific very niche topic that maybe is new and, and overwhelming to them so podcasts are a really great way she has one with christine hassler um that's great and there's others i can i can give you the links for that and then the app easiest way to get it done yeah the app awesome yeah i use clue i've used clue forever but i'm definitely going to check this one out is the app called in the flow it's called my flow f l o yeah okay so I'll download that one now too. Um, amazing. Well, we didn't even know this conversation was going to go to this place, yeah. but it's such important information. And again, it's like, I think it's one of those things that I actually just forget about because, you know, I taught, I had um, a class that I taught a two-part class called lunar moon magic years ago on this, when I first discovered it and started implementing it in my life and in my business. But, you know, it's like you kind of evolve and, and then I just don't think about it that much anymore, but it's important information to share. So I'm really happy that it, that it came up. Um, okay. Where do we want to take this next? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I guess I, I'd like to ask you, um, what role do you think that um, embodiment and like, and most importantly, embodying our sovereignty has in like this evolution of humanity that we're seeing right now, like what role do you think that that has to play in moving us forward from this place that we find ourselves in right now? Yeah, that's such a big, loaded, amazing question. I mean, different opinions aside, regardless of whether you think that everything that's happening in the world makes a lot of sense or whether you think that it doesn't make any sense, what I see is that we are being invited, let's call it, not to not say pushed, but we are being invited into this choice point where so many of the things that we took for granted before are being taken away from us, are being censored, are being restricted. And so many of the things that we used to do, the things that we used to have, the life as life as we knew it is no longer here. And sure, in some cases, we can live our lives and not fully notice. Like, for example, where I live, I don't really notice so much that we're living in these crazy times. In saying that, the majority of the world is um, living this new reality, right? And my question is, where to from here? Where do we think this is going? And for how much longer are we willing to wait and see where this is going? So... If we look at it from, let's say, a business perspective, when we're entering any business venture, we look at potential risks, like potential losses and potential gains. Right now, we are at a point where the potential gains are not many and the potential losses, regardless of whether you think that things are really making sense or not any sense, with regardless of whether you think that people are conspiracy theories or you're totally into the rabbit holes of conspiracies, it doesn't matter look at the world as it is going and ask yourself what are the potential losses and the potential wins the potential gains there are not that many potential gains compared to the potential losses loss of our freedom loss of our um, rights loss of so many different things that we are seeing now threatened therefore my question is to every single leader to every single entrepreneur to every single visioner to every single human for how long do we wait until we choose to make a stand? And therefore, this is why embodiment comes in so strongly and as such an important piece, because so many of us want freedom, value freedom, value um, peace and justice and truth and all of these things. However, we are saying yes or behaving in ways that aren't in alignment with as prioritizing those and we have come to a time as i said at the start where we are being invited into a choice point and it's really up to us now whether we want to sit and watch and wait and see what happens or whether we want to really embody true leadership true leadership is about going first it's not about waiting and seeing and then hoping that some other leader goes first it's about going first and this looks different for every person for some people it's really getting into you know finding alternative ways of socializing and doing social media and doing internet world things for some people is getting super into decentralized ways of finance and managing our finances for some people is fully going into activism and going to the protests and doing other things for some people is purchasing land and learning how to be completely off grid. It doesn't matter what it is to you, but the, the point of this conversation is, will you sit and wait and see, or will you be a leader? And if you are here to be a leader, if you call yourself a leader, then it is time to go first. In whatever way resonates as true for you, but it is time to go first, because the issues that we are facing now is because way too many of us have sat and waited and trusted that something will magically happen or that our neighbor will take action for us. And it is important that we choose to be in our leadership. Leaders go first. Leaders go first. You take the lead. That's what we call it. You take the lead, you go first. So again, however that looks like for you, 
it's not the point. The point is that we're at a crucial, crucial time in humanity and how you show up in this moment matters most. It matters for you, it matters for your loved ones and it matters for the future of humanity and the future generations. So those of us that are wanting to really be a stand for either way, whatever your beliefs are, I don't care. You get to embody leadership. And I'll say it just one more time, leaders go first. So whatever that means to you is different. And, and as I said, it doesn't matter. But the point is that there's no more time to be waiting around. And how we choose to embody or not embody this true sacred leadership will determine the future of humanity. So it is crucial that we start taking a stand. Yeah, I think that's such a powerful, such a powerful statement. And this really is, you know, this is the new feminine leadership. It is everything that we've talked about on this podcast today. It is, you know, step, stepping into places of self-responsibility and, you know, embracing what it means to be an embodied feminine leader and, you know, the how that isn't being judgmental and that is embracing all of us, including our masculine and our feminine energies. And it is embracing our, you know, very lunar uh, cycle and realities and getting back into touch with, you know, who we were meant to be as beings on this planet and our relationship to this planet. Um, And, you know, you know, I'm fully on board with the, you know, we need to be doing our purpose work in the world right now. And it is time for the leaders to step up. Um, And I love, like, it's such a powerful place, I think, to end this podcast on is, is this idea of leaders go first. And we are in this situation because too many of us have been sitting around trying to perfect the work that we're meant to put out into the world or have been, you know, not fully embracing the sense of urgency that there is on this planet right now for us to do our work. So um, this feels like a really amazing place to end the podcast. I love that statement about leaders going first. Um, You can find Sigrid everywhere on social media under um, Sigrid Tosius at Sigrid Tosius. Um, We're going to put her website and the link to her incredible podcast, Sacred Leaders in the show notes. Um, she is also has a really special new program coming up that I want to give you just a minute to talk about your feminine embodied leader mentorship. Um, but you are definitely going to want to come visit me over on the wild network because this show actually has an expanded version where Sigrid, uh, is going to be diving deeply into creating safety to lean into the feminine as a feminine leader. Um, so she's going to have an opportunity to do some teaching in the expanded version um, of this podcast. So if you come over to the wild network and you join me on the wild network and you opt in for the wealth, Witch podcast premium membership, you will get the full video um, of this whole session plus her additional teaching session. But tell us a little bit about feminine embodied leader mentorship uh, before we move into the next segment of this show. Yes, thank you. So following what we were just talking about, the reason why we don't embody our leadership fully, it's because we A, don't feel safe, or to there's a lot of shadows sometimes running the show um, places of our unintegrated self that are running the the what we call leadership or also because we don't have the awareness around what we don't know that we don't know so within this mentorship what we do is really bringing this level of self-responsibility to look at yourself and all of the different ways in which you are showing up and not showing up in your life, in your leadership, in your business. And what is the gap between who you say you want to be and the impact that you know you are here to create and who you are being and the impact that you're currently creating. Really making sure that you are living and living from a space of embodiment, a space of abundance, space of freedom, and a space of pleasure. It is so important that we learn to have successful businesses and lives in a way that is spacious, that is fun, that is pleasurable, instead of it costing us everything that we desire in life or our life costing us the bigness of the mission that we know we are here to carry. So within this, this is a four month 
one-on-one -on -one initiation mentorship where as i said we go into ceremony we work with rituals we work with different processes to really bring about the healing and the strategies that are needed so that you can fully embody the most authentic liberated expressed version of yourself as a woman as a leader and as an entrepreneur and I have only a couple of spots for this. We start in January. So any woman that is interested into this can find the link um, in your show notes. I'm, I'm assuming, I'm hoping. And um, yeah, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me a direct message on Instagram as well. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here. This has been an incredible conversation. Um, definitely sparked some uh, deep levels of remembrance in me. And, and uh, yeah, it just, it was beautiful and amazing to have you here. So with that, we will wrap the initial bit of this podcast. Um, so until next time, uh, this is the Wealth Witch signing off. And I think the most important thing for you to carry out of this podcast today is leaders go first. And um, if that is you, it is time to step fully into true embodiment of who you are here to be as a leader. That's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to connect with me on social media and reach out. I love hearing from you. And if you want more of me, real, raw, and uncensored, make sure to join the Wealth Witch Telegram channel. It's my free channel where I share all of my random daily musings, as well as the information that I feel like is important and pertinent to my community. We've put a link to the Telegram channel in the show notes. So make sure to come join us over there if that intrigues you. Remember, wealth is a mindset and you are the most powerful creator in your reality. Until next time, this is the Wealth Witch signing off. Freedom.